Now we're going to go over the magic coding. So battle menu selection is equal to one. That means that on the GUI, uh, magic is highlighted. And remember, we're just doing the enemy one any action is equal to one. That's just to ensure that the entry uh, animations have run through. Um, once again, battle KP is equal to five. That's just to ensure that the player has pressed enter or Z or spacebar on the keyboard. And then we're doing another halt action switch. So we're switching that on. We have you know this uh, page right here with the halt action is you know turned on. That means the player can't choose from the options in the GUI. You can't move about the GUI anymore. And then we have a sound effect, or, uh, you know, choice sound effect. Then we have another sound effect here. Um, and this sound effect is just a, a character, um, you know, saying something in Japanese. It's like some sort of attack. I think he says like Deathbringer or something like that. That's what the sound effect is. Uh, we have a hero one any action is equal to four. That's going to be his uh, magic animation with a 1.2 second uh, wait. So this is actually his magic charge. Let me show you guys what that looks like. Um, four, right here. So for 1.2 seconds, we're basically doing this right here. He's basically charging up for his attack. And then five is when he actually unleashes his magic attack. So this is five right here. Okay. So let's go back here to page two. After 1.2 seconds, it's going to be equal to five. And then we have enemy one, any action variable is set to five. And that, if you remember, is the um, animation for the uh, monster uh, getting hurt. We have a play sound effect. Um, this is just a sound effect um, that, I don't know, goes well with a magic, uh, magical effect. And we have a show battle animation here. This is just an RTP default. You can find this in your engine. You don't have to create this. Um, this is an Earth Magic S3 animation that we display over the wolf uh, event. Play sound effect, monster two. And we wait one uh, second, just so the animation and the sound effect run through. And we have another um, animation over the wolf event. This is two, just to show that two HP has been taken off the wolf with a variable mob one HP plus two. Then we do a any enemy and hero uh, any action. We set that to one, which is you know once again there's standing pose. We have a mob turn on, so we're allowing the monster uh, event, uh, not the monster event, but this mob, mob turn event to run through by turning that on, and we're turning hero turn. Uh, off, so none of these pages can be turn can be activated or triggered, and then we have a halt action off, so the player can choose between different options in their GUI. Um, so that's that's just how it goes back and forth. You know, mob turn on, it's a monster turn, and then when mob turn uh, on is turned on, this goes through, and then at the end we have uh, we turn this off, the switch off, and then we turn hero on. And once the player chooses between the four options, um, after after that uh, turn is complete, then we have a hero turn off and mob turn on. So that we're just going back and forth basically. Um, remember, we did this last uh, tutorial. This is for battle menu selection is equal to three, and we just you know with a sound effect. And when the player presses enter over uh, the run uh, GUI option or the battle menu selection uh, value of three, then he's just teleported to that CMS tutorial map that we created for a previous tutorial. Uh, we already went over this in the beginning and we've gone over this in previous uh, tutorials for this custom battle menu system. So you can look at that. Um, the last event that I need to cover is this event. I named it battle over. Um, what can happen or is uh, if the variable mob one HP is greater than or equal to eight. So that means that that wolf has eight HP if it's equal to, um, or it has seven HP if it's equal to eight or not, or you know more nine, ten, eleven, whatever. Then this uh, these event commands are triggered. Um, what we're doing is switch uh, operation battle over on. So if we go here. 
Battle Over is on, that means the player can choose, you know, between the options in the GUI. Uh, Battle Over on is here, which means the player can't press enter and, you know, confirm an attack or confirm a magic spell. And then we have Battle Over on here, which means that the wolf can't do anything. Um, and go back here. So what we're doing is uh, racing picture 43. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what I use as picture 43, to be honest. Uh, let me try to find it. Oh, that must be the enemy. Okay, yeah. Picture 43 is the enemy's HP bar. We're just erasing that. Um, if it gets erased here too, I guess I just did that as a extra precaution. Um, I guess I didn't need that, but I did it anyways. Anyways, we're doing a play background music fanfare 6. Um, you know, this is just going to be your victory music. Enemy 1, any action is equal to 6. If we go back here, go to 6, and click on this, that's all it is. Um, then we do a 0.5 second wait, play sound effect. This is just the heroes uh, spouting off like a victory, um, I don't know, victory cry or whatever. And then we have a hero on any action set to 7, which is the reverse of the entry animation. So if I go to 7, See, it goes five, four, three, so on and so forth. Um, so that happens, and then hero XP plus one, hero XP variable plus one. Remember, this is our hero XP um, event, so plus one. If it was zero, then it would be increased a bit. If the value was equal to four, then it would go to 5 and it would be increased greatly, so on and so forth. Um, that's all that would do. And then we have a wait until key is pressed. Um, you could do a key in the process with conditional branch. Um, you have that battle KP variable equal to the value of 5. But you can also just do a wait and then wait until key is pressed here and hit OK there. And whenever the player presses enter on the keyboard, then this event will continue on. Um, so we're just doing a play sound effect choice. Show a picture 50 with a high transparency, and then we're moving that to a low transparency to cover up all the graphics and point, wait 0.2 seconds. Um, turning that mob turn switch off. Uh, this is for when we enter this battle again, uh, the monster won't attack immediately. Instead, the hero will get to choose, or the player will get to choose what he wants to do with that character. So that's why we're turning hero turn uh, that switch on. Then we have a teleport, we're teleporting back here. Uh, chain sprite association. Uh, enemy one, any action zero. Here one, any action zero. So they go back to their starting poses when we enter this battle again. And then we're doing a battle menu selection set to zero so that, you know, when we enter this battle again, the uh, GUI will display the attack option uh, always. And the second page we have here is a game over event. So if the hero's HP is equal greater than or equal to six, so in this you know battle, for this battle we only have six HP. Obviously, if you're making your own RPG game, the hero would be able to you know most likely level up or whatever. So you would have to do conditions um, where the hero's HP is equal to six for you know if he's level one, if he's level two, and his HP increases by two. You would have to do a condition where hero HP is equal to eight. Um, whatever the case is, since we're since our battle system isn't that in depth, um, and our hero only has six HP, um, once that does happen, the following events occur. Uh, we have a play sound effect, hero die two. That's just a gruesome sound effect um, that I found online. Switch operation battle over is on, and um, game over. Um, so basically, if you go to page, I can't remember, oh, here, page three, uh, and hit game over, it would just go to uh, the game over screen. Um, and you can choose what that screen looks like under system. I can go to system. <laughs> and right here, game over screen. So this is the image that would be displayed. And 
there's a sound effect here, game over screen sound, uh, BGM, so you can choose your background music for that game over screen. And that is pretty much the extent of it. Um, all of the other events on this map are the same as the previous two maps. Um, you know, without any modifications, so that's pretty much all you need to know um, in order to create a basic custom battle system for your game. Um, your character would probably have um, more stats. Uh, for example, I didn't do anything with magic. Um, uh, regardless of whether that uh, character uh, uses magic in the battle menu, um, his MP will not decrease. And that's just because I figure if you know how to decrease and increase HP, which I have shown you, you can do the same thing for MP. But, you know, obviously in a, a more complex uh, battle system, you would have variables for the character's defense, for the character's uh, dexterity, you might have a hit-miss system, uh, you might have a critical system where, you know, randomly the character when attacking will do you know, twice as much damage as normal. Uh, you might have. I got a question about. Um, uh, I got a question from a YouTube user. He was he or she was asking me about doing uh, timing events in battle and in a, a battle system. So if the player presses enter at an appropriate time after hitting the attack option, um, you know the character would be able to do more damage. You can do things like that. Um, if you guys are curious how to do something specifically, you can send me a request and I'll try to, you know, um, uh, respond to those requests. Um, but what I have given you guys in the last uh, three tutorials and, you know, four or five videos with this custom battle system um, is a proper foundation of how you can create your own custom battle system for your own games. Um, with this foundation in hand, you will be able to you know, build upon it and do something more complex, do something more interesting, um, you make know, your own graphics, and um, make something that people will uh, you know, respond to, something that will garner your game more attention than it otherwise would. You know, a default battle system just doesn't cut it uh, you know, nowadays people are experimenting with all sorts of crazy things. And you can you really can do a lot of these things in RPG Maker 2003. You don't necessarily need a more complex uh, or recent engine. And you know there are always ways to get around, but um, you know for those of you who feel like you are being limited by this engine. Um, maybe you want to do things that you can't effectively do even through um, creative uses um, of you know events and switches and variables and all that. Um, you feel like maybe you can do more in a more complex engine like VXAs. Uh, I just got a trial of that today and it's really cool actually. Um, I'm gonna play around with that a bit more. Um, you know, if, if you feel like you are being limited then you know, don't hold yourself back. Um, XP, VXN, VXA allows scripting so you can do some really cool stuff with that, but uh, for those of you who you know, love 2003, I, I know I certainly do. Um, there are always creative ways you can get around things. Uh, you just have to think about it um, and look at it practically. If you look at it practically and if you look at it logically, you can um, get around things uh, a lot of the times. But anyways, um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for sticking around. Um, I will see you guys next time. Uh, if you guys have a video tutorial request for RPG Maker or for pretty much anything else, I'm doing a lot of things. Um, you can see my Photoshop is up right here. Um, and I have a ton of uh, game engines that I use to make things and um, a ton of Adobe products that I use. So if you guys have requests on those, I can see um, about helping you guys out. But they will they will come slowly over time. <laughs>
Um, anyways, I think I'm kind of uh, blabbering on. So I'll end it there and I will see you guys uh, later. So take care.